Hi there, and welcome to 30 Days of Prayer for Your Children. I should say 30 Days of Prayer for Our Children because I'm praying with you and I have children, and I just believe so much in the power of agreement. I am really excited that we're coming together because you might be on the other side of the computer screen or your smartphone or the other end of your earbuds from me, but God doesn't see time. We are together. You're here and I'm here and we are praying two or more. When two or more are gathered, I am there among them, God tells us. So we're here and the Holy Spirit is present and we are praying powerful, anointed prayers for our children and our grandchildren and whatever children are in your sphere of influence um, that you're here to pray for today. So let's get started with just expectation that God is here and he is guiding our prayers He's directing us, he's giving us passion, and he's going to transform our children. He's going to transform us in this process. So I couldn't be more excited to to start on this journey with you. And I think the very first place that I want to start on day one is praying for our children to recognize the need for a savior. And whether you have unsaved kids or saved kids, whether they're children or grown adults, grandchildren, whoever, every single one of them needs to know that they need Jesus. So you might have a young child that professed faith in Jesus and got baptized and thinks, well, I've arrived, I'm in, and and just thinks, you know, going to church every Sunday is what it's all about. But we want more. We want more for our kids. We don't want them to think salvation and baptism is the end. We know that it's the beginning. It is the beginning of just an incredible journey with God, but we need Jesus every step of the way. And I think it's so dangerous if our kids grow to believe that they need to look perfect once they become Christians. I think we need to tear those masks down and just ask the Holy Spirit to gently and lovingly coax out of these kids um, their sinfulness for them to know I am sinful. I have sinful thoughts, which is according to Jesus, just as wrong as sinful actions. Maybe the consequences aren't the same, but, but it's sin. And for them to know that not to be torn down, but so that they can walk, fix their eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of their faith and walk toward freedom. I just picture them walking toward Jesus as just this, these, you know, heavy, sinful weights are falling off of them one by one as God reveals them through the Holy Spirit that they're able to just walk in in freedom. And, and it takes recognizing that sin and recognizing the need for Jesus to take that sin upon himself um, to do that. Or you might have a child that you're praying for, whether they're a child or an adult, that doesn't know Jesus. And of course, they need to know that they need a Savior. So we're going to pray for that as well. So I just want you to join me. And as we begin, just expect big things. I just want to expect big things out of the next 30 days. And I just can't wait to hear how you've been affected by this, how you've been impacted, how God is working in your children's lives and in your own heart, what he's revealing to you. Because as we pray, he's going to put things in your mind and on your heart. And you're going to be adding to that prayer list, these things that you're going to want for your kids. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for this time together to come together and pray in agreement that you would come down and touch the children in our lives that we're praying for. Father, you know each one by name. You know every hair on their head. And we just thank you for that, God, that the almighty God of the universe, just with unfathomable power and glory, would care. Thank you for caring. And as much as we love these kids that we're praying for, God, you love them all the more if that's even possible. Lord, we know that all have sinned and fall short of your glory. We just pray right now, we lift up these children to you and pray that they would understand that and that it would be just as so many of your truths are contrary to what the world would think. The world might think that Wanting our children to understand their sinfulness would tear them down, but God, it builds them up. It unshackles them from the mask that that they feel like they need to wear. It allows them to know, yes, I'm a sinner, but 
but I have Jesus. And because of him, I can walk in abundant life. God, we pray that abundant life for our kids. We pray that as they walk toward Jesus, as they see that glimmer in front of them, whether they're saved and they're running toward him for eternity, or whether they're unsaved and they see something in someone else, it's a glimmer of Jesus, or they see the hands and feet of Jesus in action and they, they're attracted to him through those they see around them, or they read about Jesus in your word, God, and their blinders come off and they see, I need a savior. God, we just pray that they would walk toward him, that they would run, that they would run toward him, God, with open arms, just welcoming his transforming power in their lives. Thank you, God, that that's possible. God, we just ask that you would surround them with other people, whether it's adults, children, um, co-workers, schoolmates, whatever it is, God, that you would surround them by other people that would point them to Jesus. Lord, I just pray that you would help them to be drawn to him, just that there would be a magnetism about, about people that know Jesus that would draw them um, to themselves and then in that, in that way, pointing them to Jesus. And I also just pray that they would um, just sense you all around them, God, that they would see you working in their lives in ways that they can't explain otherwise. God, we just pray that you would open their minds and open their hearts to their need for a savior. We pray that you would protect them from a works mentality when they do become believers. Father, that they would never willingly or unconsciously elevate service or good behavior over a genuine faith, God. Help them to be pure. We just pray just a refining process, God, that, that the chaff would be burned off and what would remain would be pure and holy and set apart to you, God. We pray that they would constantly be in a state of gratitude to you and a dependence on you and you alone. Lord, that their identity would be in Christ and in nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen.